Welcome to Discovering. Ice fishing in the UP usually means perch or bluegills, walleye or pike. What in the heck is a burbot? They're not fun to clean, but they do taste good. Then we'll take a look at a unique UP innovation that will make your ice fishing easier. Sit back and relax. That's all tonight right here on Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan A while back, I had the opportunity to visit with Pat Magdaleno of Mag's Custom Rods for a look at how custom rods are built. I met up with Pat again and had the chance to see his rods in action on Lake Superior night fishing for burbot. So what is a burbot? It's the only freshwater cod-like fish. It's also known as freshwater ling, lawyer, ling cod, eel pout, and a variety of other names. During the summer months, burbot are typically found in colder water below the thermocline. In Lake Superior, they can live in depths below a thousand feet. Between December and March, burbot migrate to nearshore reefs of sand and gravel to spawn. It looks like a cross between a catfish and an eel. Its serpent-like body is distinguishable by a single whisker. I'm told it tastes a lot better than it looks. So we're out here tonight on Lake Superior. Gonna do some burbot fishing. But I'm gonna put out a couple tip-ups and with a big bait on it, see if we can't get something big. Then we're gonna jig for burbot in the shack fishing about 70 feet of water I'm gonna put a small white fish on this tip up never know I might get a big pike or big lake trout even a giant burbot put him on a quick strike set him on the bottom Let's see if we can't get something big I'm using a Swedish pimple maybe three-quarter ounce tipped with a couple minnow heads and uh, big thing is you got to get a glow jig I'm just using a bigger pimple because we're fishing 70 feet and it's nice to get it down fast usually I only fish 30 to 40 but fish have been on a little deeper pretty much any jig with a cut bait or anything like that you'll get them burbot aren't too picky they're pretty good eating too they look pretty nasty but I was hesitant to try eating them for a while, but when I first tried, it's really good. I boiled it and then sauteed it in butter. A lot of people like to deep fry them, and they say cheap man's lobster, so it's pretty, pretty good. I like it. Yeah, 
I'm using a 36 inch medium heavy actually bait caster with a spiral wrap setup where the guides start on the top of the blank and you turn them 15 to 30 degrees until they're on the bottom and you just get better torque out of the rod and this is actually the first ice rod I've made like that. I haven't even caught a fish on this one yet so we'll see how it works. There's one. Oh, sweet. Perfect. Seems like a pretty good one. Yeah, he's right here. There he is. Bourbon. Not too big. Smaller one. That'll be dinner tomorrow. Yeah, they're just different fish. Just Lip them like a bass, kind of look like an eel. All they do is eat on the bottom. Slimy, they're not fun to clean, but they do taste good. That's probably on the smaller side for Lake Superior, but it'll eat. That's the first fish I've ever caught on this rod and it felt amazing. I made this rod, I'm going to Lake Erie here in a couple of weeks and got a medium heavy for walleye. Bait caster picks up line really good. Spiral wrap. Yeah, it felt really good. I'm gonna set up this iFish Pro. Show you how to use it. I haven't caught a fish on it yet, but I just got it the other day. I like catching fish on a rod more than a tip up. I'm just using a sucker. I was walleye fishing yesterday and just using the dead suckers and Seems like dead bait works better than live. For burbot, just sit it right on the bottom. Pretty much any kind of cut bait will work good. Little treble hook and some weight. Sit it right on the bottom. And it's nice because you have your depth marked every time. It just stops right at the bobber stop. Fishing about 70 feet. I'm gonna put this one right on the bottom. Usually those burbot are sitting right on the bottom, if not a foot or two up. Usually get them on cut bait or minnows or pretty much eat anything. Kind of a weird looking fish. Kind of like an eel. If you can get on a good bite, it's pretty fun catching them. Usually bite at night. I've only caught a couple during the day ever. But at night they seem to feed really good. And I believe tonight's the full moon, so we should be able to get into them. See that's at the bottom there. You mark your bottom with the bobber stop. Right there. Slide your line through there. Put the flag down and you put your little clip and your bobber stop it goes through a little hole and it stops there. When you get a bite, just Pulls that clip and you leave your bail open and it just takes line freely. So it's pretty cool. Hopefully, we can catch fish on it tonight. We'll see how they work. That's what they're feeding on. Just marking them all over the Vexlar and they're just gorging on the smelt. 
We'll use him for bait. Little smelt that swam up the hole. Some action. <sighs> Full moon burbot bite tonight. A little small one. These guys are hard to even get a hold of. They're so slimy. A little baby burbot. That one can go back. Let's see. There we go. That's pretty cool. I'd much rather use that than a tip up. Feels like a decent one. Yeah, that took a pretty good sized sucker down. That's cool though that that thing worked. Oh yeah, little whiskers. I'll eat that one. Just a fat belly, that's all they do is eat. They're not fun to clean, they're a mess, they're slimy. But they're good eating. If you boil them with saute and butter, they're really similar to lobster. But you deep fry them, they're really good too. Yeah, I'd say they're kind of like cod. But they're... A lot of people won't even try them just because of the way they look. But I'll eat them. I wanted to get one on this It's always good to have the right rod for whatever type of fishing you're doing. Like right now I'm fishing, you know, pretty good sized jig and 70 feet of water I'm running braid no stretch pretty stiff rod so you can get a good hook set and uh, just so you're catching bigger fish you want a heavier rod like uh, right here if you're fishing panfish I got a nice panfish rod here this is an ultralight probably bluegill perch I put a glow bead on the tip for low light conditions, you can still see the bite really good. It's a nice light action for panfish. And then I got a medium heavy right here set up on this iFish Pro. It's good for walleye, deep water jigging. I always run braid in deep water, so there's no stretch. Let's see if we can get one on that. Then I also have a power noodle. This is also a panfish rod, too. It's got a light tip but really good backbone so if you're fishing deep water panfish you can still see that really light bite but it's got the backbone to get a good hook set in it too so just all kinds of different rods for different types of fishing now that i make them i can have multiple of everything but just different tools for different jobs bait caster i, I like fishing bait casters a lot they pick up line fast especially for deep water you know one crank is like three of those on a spinning reel and it's just easier for me oh yeah there we go pretty good one midnight fish right here A 
slower bite tonight. Oh yeah. Biggest one of the night. Tail first. The last one is the biggest. Yeah, well, it's past midnight and we got to fish. We're gonna call it a night. Could have done better, could have done worse. But we got some nice fish. Here's a look at a unique UP innovation designed to make ice fishing easier. This is called the under ice bait bag and it is designed to hang from your shack. Put your minnows in and drop them down below the ice and then just keep them there. And your bait is as lively as can be when you come back. You don't have to bring your bait home, put them on an aerator, try and keep them cold. We have done all that and I got tired of doing that so we, we came up with this. And uh, we've had real good luck with it. People have been real happy. We started working on the under ice bags about about three years ago. Um, got tired of hauling bait back and forth from the shack to the house, trying to keep it alive. And so I came up with a rudimentary bag that I just sat down the hole in the shack, and it worked good. And we used that for one year and then we we went through a couple different designs and material trying to figure out exactly which one works the best and what would be more efficient for the minnows and we came up with this both rings are weighted and flexible so they'll come up out of a hole that is not so round after you spud it open it's a vinyl tubing that's filled with weight we glue the two ends together with an insert. The weights drag it down the hole and keep it there so it's, no, it's not floating up or getting stuck underneath the ice or anything like that. The material is a heavy duty athletic mesh. It's a polyester. It is the same kind of material that like football jerseys and stuff are made out of. So it's pretty tough. They've been out in the field for, this will be the third year. Some have been out for four and we haven't had any complaints of them falling apart or anything like that. So it's pretty, pretty tough stuff. We've got a stainless steel carabiner that hooks onto your rope. A lot of guys have told us that they use light duty dog chains and hang that from the top of your shack or wherever you want. And then if you nick it with your spud while you're opening your hole, you don't lose your bag. That's just to hold on to when you're dumping your minnows out. I tried it and it seemed like it was handy and the people liked it, so we kept doing it. This is our eight inch auger bag. It's actually seven inches, so it goes down the hole. And we also have a bag for a 10 inch auger, which is nine inches. They vary a little bit in length. They're, for the most part, they're usually around 30 inches. We've had a lot of help along the way uh, with the different designs and materials. And uh, it, it's kind of cool that it's a family. It's a family business. The material gets shipped to my mom and dad's place and they do all the cutting. Um, my mom makes the initial sew of this long seam and the bottom strapping on the bottom cap. And then they bring it to us. And the kids and I fill these rings with weights and glue them. And then we sew them into the bag and put the rope on the top and the carabiner and package them up and ship them out. What guys usually do is put their, when they're getting ready to head out from their shack, drop their bait inside here, close it up, hook it onto your chain or whatever you have rigged up inside your shack, drop it with the bait down the hole. We recommend that you hang it so your carabiner is about at the bottom of the ice. That way when you're opening the hole back up, when you come back to the shack, you don't nick the bag or whatever you have hanging it. And when you get back to your shack, you got a bucket with water in it ready for your minnows. You pull her up, open the bag, grab the bottom, dump them in your bucket and your, 
you're good to go. Take it and hang it up in your shack and this material dries pretty quick if you got any kind of little heater or anything in there and it's ready for you next time you want to use it. The benefits are you don't have to bring your minnows home. You don't have to transport them back and forth from wherever your shack is uh, to your house trying to keep them aerated, keep them cold, all things that, that are a pain. This makes it pretty easy just to leave them there and they do very well in lake water of course that's their home environment so they they hang out inside the bag and they're ready for you when you when you come back for all sorts of reasons to get out and enjoy the outdoors this weekend it's sled dog racing time in marquette the up 200 and midnight run kick off on friday the 16th then the jack pine 30 on the 17th be in downtown marquette friday night to send the mushers off and then in the Lower Harbor Park on Sunday to welcome them back. For all the info, visit up200.org. It's free fishing weekend in Michigan, so it's a popular weekend for tournaments. The William Anderson Sportsman Club will be holding their annual ice fishing derby on Saturday in Hermansville. In Wakefield, it's the 9th annual Wakefield Volunteer Fire Department ice fishing derby from 11 to 4 at the Wakefield VFW. Kids 3 and under free, 12 and under 3 bucks, and 13 and over 5 bucks. It's a great way to get out and support your local fire department. The UP Ice Fishing Tournaments continue this weekend at the Groveland Mine Ponds near Felch. Look for them on Facebook for more info. The Boundary Waters Muskie Club will be holding its 10th Annual Expo from 12 to 5 Central on Saturday the 17th at Recreation Lanes in Iron Mountain. The event will feature prize raffles, tackle sales and swaps, and presentations by guest speakers, including Steve Hiding, managing editor of Muskie Hunter Magazine and frequent guest on the Muskie Hunter TV show. The public is welcome and encouraged to attend. For more info, visit bwmuskyclub.com. Well, that's it for this week. Be sure to check out 906outdoors.com where you'll find the 906 fishing report, TV6 weather, shopping, and more. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. <laughs>